Hi boys and girls, it's good to see you again this week. Thank you so much for those students that sent pictures of their locomotive courses that they drew with sidewalk chalk last week. It was really fun to see your creativity and you in action. Um, keep them coming. Email me some of your pictures from the activities that you're playing this week. Let me know which game is uh, your favorite. And let's, let's talk about what are we gonna do this week. We're gonna do the underhand throw. This skill is used a lot in different sports and activities, and it's used in your everyday life too. So when we underhand throw, it's always to um, something that's close to us. So if I wanted to throw to this box, I would use an underhand throw. I wanna be really accurate when I use this type of throw. So overhand throws, that's when we wanna throw a long distance. Underhand throws are when we're close to somebody. So you'll see this skill used in baseball and softball. You'll use the, see this skill when you underhand throw to yourself when you're serving a tennis ball or serving a volleyball. And you'll see it in everyday life too. Uh, for example, today my husband was outside in our backyard and I was in the kitchen and he had forgotten our car keys. So I underhand threw my car keys to him in the backyard. It, you have to be very accurate. We didn't want to drop our keys and it saves time. I didn't have to run outside and he was able to leave a little bit quicker. So uh, we did work on this skill earlier this year. So this is a review and we're going to review some of those cues that are going to help you be successful at throwing underhand. The first cue is face your target. So if my target is that shoe box, I want my toes and my shoulders to face the shoe box. That means if I drew a line from my toes and my shoulders, I would be facing the box. I am not ready. My toes are not facing and neither are my shoulders. So I wanna face my target. The second cue, you wanna put your arm back. This gives you the power to get whatever you're throwing to your target. So the closer you are to something, the less back you need to go. The further you get away from your target, the more power you're gonna need. The third one, step with your opposite foot of your throwing hand. I write with my right hand, so that's my throwing hand. So since my right hand is my throwing hand, that makes my left foot the opposite. So when you throw, you wanna step with your opposite foot on the opposite side of your body. If you have a sticker at home, take that sticker and put it on your opposite foot. So it's a good visual reminder of which one's your opposite. If you don't have a sticker, you can use a sock, you can put it underneath your shoelace, and that's going to be the same thing. So this is my opposite foot, toes to target, arm back. I step with my opposite foot when I throw. If you write with your left hand, then your opposite foot would be on the other, would be your right foot. So don't think of this as cheating. This is a great way to learn which one's your opposite. So use this visual cue. I'm gonna keep the sticker on for me during the games today. When you release whatever you're throwing, I'm throwing a pair of socks, you wanna release between your knee and your hip. If you release too far back, it's gonna to go to the ground. If you release too far up, gonna go straight up or behind you. So we're gonna be between our knee and our hip. And you always wanna follow through to your target. That means you're gonna be pointing where you want your ball or pair of socks to go. After you feel very comfortable with all of these cues, I want you to try to do two at the same time. So stepping with your opposite foot and releasing at the same time. So that takes a lot of coordination, it's your brain telling you. So when you're doing them at the same time, toes to target, arm goes back, and then you're gonna step and throw at the same time. Instead of having it two different steps, trying to do it at the same time. So toes to target, arm back, I step and release, and then I follow through to my target. We're gonna get started with three different games. All you're gonna need, you can have um, some sort of marker, that's something uh, like stuffed animals would do, just letting you know different spots to throw from. You'll need uh, something to throw. So I'm gonna use a pair of balled up socks. If you have a soft, squishy ball that won't hurt anything inside, or um, what else? 
you can use a pair of socks. I just went blank. Sorry, guys. Uh, anything that your mom and dad say is okay to throw inside or if you're outside and you have a ball or something else, or you can bring your pair of socks outside, that works too. And um, we'll need a laundry basket or a bucket or a cardboard box or a pot or a pan, anything your parents will let you use as a target. So all things you can find around your house and we'll get started with our first game. The first activity we're going to play today to practice our underhand throw is called laundry basket flip. You need two things to use as markers. I'm gonna use my daughter's slippers. I have an object to throw, a pair of balled up socks, and I have a laundry basket. If you don't have a laundry basket, you can use something like a shoe box or a pot or a pan or a bucket, anything you have that you can underhand throw something into. Uh, I'm going to mark my starting position and my goal. So uh, my basement isn't that wide, but I'm going to come on over here and go all the way to the other side of the basement. If you can go outside, you'll have a farther uh, area to challenge yourself of greater distance than inside your home, but inside works too. So I am going to start with my basket very close to my target. I'm practicing all of my cues every time. And um, I'm going to use, what am I gonna use? I have um, a piece of material to remember which one is my opposite foot to remind me. And I have my object I'm gonna throw. So my toes are to my target, shoulder and toes, arm goes back. I step with my opposite foot, follow through to my target. It went in, so I get to flip my laundry basket one time. I'm gonna run back to my starting position, following all of my cues. I got it in, so I'm gonna flip my laundry basket. Run back to my starting position. If I miss, no big deal. I run and get my sock and run back to so see how long it takes you to reach your goal. If you're finding that the laundry basket is too big, change to a smaller target. Oops. And you can do the same thing. You can flip, see how far you can get it. All right, to make it more difficult, make your target smaller, increase your distance. To make it easier, have a bigger target and be a little bit closer. Good luck and have fun. The next underhand throw game we're gonna play is called Make It, Take It. For this game, the setup, you need one target, and that's gonna be the brown shoe box for me, and you'll need a bunch of different spots. The spots for me, the markers are my stuffed animals, and they are placed at different distances and different directions from the target and you will need one object to throw. So I am going to use my balled up socks. You can use anything uh, that you have at your house. That's all you need for the setup. Now that I have make it, take it all set up, I'm ready to play. I'm going to start in a starting position. So my starting position is going to be the bottom step of my stair. And I'm gonna time myself to see how long it takes me to take all of these objects back to my starting position. I can only take it if I make my balled up socks into the box from each different object. The further the object, the further the stuffed animal is away from the target, the harder it's gonna be. So this will be a really hard one. This one would be a little bit easier because I'm closer to my target. So when I push start on my timer, I'm gonna run to the first one. I'm gonna try Pluto. Toes to target, arm goes back, I step and throw. Since I made it, I get to take Pluto back to my starting position. I'm gonna put it over here. And now I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna go all the way back here to the blue elephant. Toes to target, arm goes back, I step and throw. Made it, so I get to take it back to my starting position. If I miss, go to Daniel Tiger. If I miss, no big deal, I just don't take it. I still have to go back to my starting position and I think I'm good exercise and I can go right back to Daniel Tiger or I can try a new object. You wanna see how long it takes you to clear all of the objects. Now, if you have somebody at home that's able to play with you, it might be fun to have a little bit of a competition. So a brother or sister or a parent that's not busy, you guys can have different starting spots 
and then when you say go, see who can collect the most objects. Uh, remember the whole time, these cues, face your target, arm back, step with your opposite foot of your throwing hand, uh, make sure you're following through to your target. That's going to help you be really successful. So have fun. Give it a try. Another game we can play this week to work on our underhand throw is called Off the Wall. You're going to use your balled up socks to try to hit different targets on your wall. Make sure you ask your parents for permission before you play this game. You want to make sure it's a wall where you don't have any picture frames or decorations or that the wall is not too close to a lamp or a drinking glass where we could have an accident. Once they give you permission, then you can suggest using sticky notes or painter's tape, things that you can put on the wall that won't ruin the paint. They come off and come right back on. So uh, you won't have any mishaps with that. Uh, and once you have these markings, then think about different sizes and different levels. So you see this target's pretty big. I use more than one sticky note. And this target is much smaller. I tore a sticky note into a quarter. I put the targets at different levels. So I have high targets, I have medium targets, and I have low targets. When you're uh, practicing this game, it's a little bit different than the other two we practiced because in the first two games, the target was always on the ground, which was a low level. So at this game, you're really gonna think about your release and follow through because the targets are at different levels. So you're gonna be have to be aiming uh, at different, different areas. So it looks just like we did with the other ones using the same cues. And you notice I still have uh, my reminder, my visual reminder that this is my opposite foot since I'm throwing with my right hand. So my toes point to target, my arm goes back, and then I'm gonna step and throw at the same time and follow through. You can try to see how long it takes you to hit each and every target, or you can try to see in one minute how many uh, targets you can hit. You can use the same one over and over or uh, give each target a different point value. So maybe this one would be worth 10 points since it's really hard and this one would be worth one point. Or you don't have to keep points or time at all. You can just have fun and practice your underhand throw. I hope you enjoy this one and I will see you next week.